Well, looks like it's already happening. Let's talk about it. All right, so let's go ahead and start off this video by talking about the RTX 50 series. That's right, we're already talking about the next, next generation of GPUs before the RTX 40 series has even hit. It's already happening, we're already getting leaks, which is absolutely ridiculous. Now, if you're wondering, is the RTX 40 series completely canceled or something? No, don't worry, that's not gonna be the case. However, there are some leaks and rumors that potentially some of the 40 series might end up being delayed. Now, whether or not that's true, only time will tell, and if you want more information on that, go ahead and watch my last video, but today, that's right, we're going to be talking about stuff like the RTX 5080. Now, this information comes from a post over on Twitter, and let's go ahead and take a look at it. Now, it all started with Hassan asking, quote, Jensen going all out with his last monolithic chip, to which the leaker Comp87 Kimi responded, quote, Ada Next seems to be another monolithic chip. And this is actually some very interesting information, so I want to break it down with you guys, because there's been a lot of leaks and rumors that the RTX 50 series would finally switch to an MCM design. Now, if you don't know, MCM does stand for Multi-Chip Module Design, and what this essentially means is that they're going to be gluing multiple chips together on a substrate and the main advantages to doing so is that you can actually yield better die. So whether or not you're getting higher clock speeds or just the price of the chips overall goes down, it's just going to be a huge benefit to the GPU and CPU manufacturers if they can move to that multi-chip module design. Now the leaks and rumors currently suggest that the upcoming ARC 7000 series from AMD, which is going to be launching this year, is going to be the first MCM design GPU and it's got NVIDIA very, very worried. They're clearly worried because the ARC RTX 40 series is rumored to have a 600 watt GPU and even possibly an 800 watt GPU in reserve if needed. So clearly Nvidia is getting very panicked and having to increase their clock speeds and their power draw to go ahead and compete with what could be a very, very powerful GPU because again, that MCM design is going to give them a lot of advantages, especially when it comes to that power consumption and the cost to produce these GPUs. It's just going to allow them to create some absolutely insanely large GPUs that are also going to be really, really fast. So if the RX 7000 series comes out this year and it's absolutely incredibly powerful, it's going to be some bad news for the RTX 40 series. Now, that being said, the 40 series is also going to be very, very powerful, but it's also, like I mentioned earlier, going to be very, very power hungry to boot in order to compete with AMD's current cards. Now, when the RTX 50 series rolls around, it's starting to get a little bit concerning because originally, yes, people, like I mentioned earlier, were expecting it to be MCM, and if it's not going to be MCM, which Cop87 Kimi does seem to believe, and this guy definitely has some really great sources over at NVIDIA, well, then that's actually going to be some bad news for NVIDIA. Now, maybe they have some more tricks up their sleeve and it's going to be an absolute monster of a GPU, regardless of the fact that it's not going to be MCM. However, we do have to keep in mind, it's going to be going up against the RX 8000 series over from AMD, and that's going to be their second generation MCM design GPU. And that time around, instead of having like 12,000 shaders on one single GPU with a bunch of MCD memory control dies around it, they actually might end up going ahead and gluing together multiple graphics cores, and that's going to allow them to create an absolute monster of a GPU. So I think that NVIDIA, if they're going to go ahead and create a monolithic GPU with the RTX 50 series, it better be one heck of a GPU. They better be producing it on the latest cutting edge node, and it better be absolutely monstrously large, because if they don't, I truly believe that next generation, AMD might actually have a chance of finally beating NVIDIA. But now let's go ahead and talk about the next generation of Intel CPUs. That's right, the 13th generation just keeps leaking every single week, and I got even more leaks to go over with you guys real quick here, and this information actually comes from a videocards.com article and here's what they had to say about it quote according to enthusiastic citizen better known for reviews featuring unreleased hardware intel has now set a launch date for its new desktop cpu series it said that intel raptor lake processors will launch on october 17th which is almost three weeks after the official introduction during the innovation event on this date intel will launch its k-series cpus from 13th gen core series raptor lake s along with z790 high-end motherboards so there you have it there's some unofficial information on the launch date for the 13th generation of CPUs coming out from Intel. Now, I am expecting them to give you a pretty decent uplift in terms of their multi-core performance, and we'll talk about that in just a second. But you know what? Overall, I do believe that the 12th generation is going to continue to give really, really good value, especially when we look at the 12100 to the 12400, where, uh, yeah, those CPUs are giving you great value and performance. But if you want the best of the best, I do believe that although the 13th generation is going to come out after Zen 4, I think you're going to see a situation where Intel is going to still have a 
slight lead in terms of the gaming performance. However, in terms of the multi-core performance, you probably will see AMD continue to hold that lead, especially when it comes to price to performance on the multi-core performance. But again, if you want the best performance for gaming, let's go ahead and take a look at some more leaks for the 13th generation. Now, this information once again comes from videocards.com, where they went ahead and put together a chart of all the various different Geekbench leaks on the 13th generation. And one thing that I found very, very interesting is that the 13700K engineering sample, which by the way, all these engineering samples could potentially get even a little bit faster as time goes on, but the 13700K was able to score 2,090 points in Geekbench 5.0, which actually does put it 10% ahead of the 12700K. Now do keep in mind that 10% isn't really a huge margin and it's likely coming from increased clock speeds. However, what's a little bit more impressive is that multi-core performance where it's actually 17% faster than the 12700K. Now the 13900K engineering sample, this one's getting 2133 in the single core performance, which actually only puts it 7% ahead of the 12900K. So it's not anything absolutely insane. However, again, that multi-core performance is actually pretty insane as it's getting 37% more performance than the 12900K. So yeah, that's absolutely wild. Now, hopefully they can continue to get that single core performance just a little bit higher before these CPUs officially launch. But in all honesty, guys, if you're looking for a really great value CPU, once again, 12th gen might be the play, or if you're already on AM4, you might want to go for a Zen 3 processor, depending on what type of board you currently have, because yeah, CPUs are definitely going to be getting faster, but if you don't need more multi-core performance, I honestly think that this generation is going to be more focused on that multi-core performance. Now again, maybe they will be able to exceed 10% more performance on Raptor Lake, uh, but either way, you slice it. Current CPUs are already so fast that I don't think it'll be too much of an issue for you, unless you have a specific use case for that extra single-threaded performance. But hey, that's just what I think. Which CPU do you think will be faster? You think Raptor Lake's going to be faster, or do you think that Zen 4 is going to retake the crown? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below, and of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.